And why is it that sometimes one gets a feeling of not wanting to meditate at all? It goes on for days. What should one do? Meditate anyway or just let go and do something else, like read a book or listen to some Dhamma talks? Once you come back to the meditation, then it takes a while, even months, before Deep Samadhi sets in. Why? Thank you. Like sometimes, it's because you know, you've had a, given your mind a hard time before. That's why you don't want to meditate. You know, you've been bruised. Look, you know, why is it that, look, there's this guy, he was taking me to a retreat, to teach a retreat, and he was in this retreat centre in Sydney. And as he was uh, driving, I was going to teach the retreat, he kept on saying, I don't really want to come to this retreat, but you know, I'm a board member of this place, I have to come. And then he said, what do you, what, what's wrong with the place? He said, no, no, you have to sit for hours and it's really painful and get really bored out of my skull. And he said, he called the meditation hall, he gave the nickname, the torture chamber. And so every time he came to meditate, he was going into the torture chamber. And it's because that sometimes he didn't have any happiness or joy in meditation. It was just too painful. You know, some of these meditations where you have to sit down and you know, everybody has to come, and at 45 minutes, 50 minutes, they bing the gong and everyone has to walk, and then ding the gong, and then you sort of have to go and walk again. And some of those meditations, the, what it does to you is the mind doesn't want to meditate anymore. It's like going to the torture chamber, like going to the dentist. You only go if you really have to. So you can see just why the mind doesn't like meditating, if you force it like that, and the mind associates meditation with going to the torture chamber. So I told this guy, right, for this retreat, look at the meditation hall, it's the entertainment centre, not the torture centre. And I give lots of jokes and give lots of happiness, and when you look at meditation as being something happy, it's something you want to do, not something you have to do. So the trick is motivating yourself through joyful, happy, peaceful meditation to want to meditate. Now again, I know this from personal experience because early on when I was still a lay person, first couple of years I'd meditate every morning almost without fail. But you know, like as a lay person, you start to get busy, you miss a couple of morning meditations and then <coughs> after a while I wasn't meditating much at all. And then I remember having a cup of coffee somewhere and I think I was visiting India or something, I'm not quite sure, but and there was this German guy and we were just you know, chatting in a coffee shop and he was, you know, I said, oh, yeah, I used to meditate. And he said, why didn't you carry on meditating? Oh, I don't know, I'm not really getting anywhere, it's a bit boring. And he gave me this piece of advice, which you know, you know, really sort of changed me and uh, got me going again to really enjoy the meditation. He said, at the end of every meditation, you should pause and ask yourself how you feel. He said, you'll find that even those things you think as bad meditations, you've made a lot of progress. You feel so much more peaceful and happy after every meditation. And that was a brilliant piece of advice, because the reason I wasn't meditating, because I didn't think it was working, it wasn't getting anywhere, it was a waste of time. Well, the reason was because I meditated and then as soon as I finished I'd get up and do something else. I wouldn't pause to see what had happened. <coughs> And so now, you know, those of you who listen to me at Nolamara, I always do that. At the end of every guided meditation, I say, no, soon we're going to come out of meditation. Now, how do you feel? What effect has that meditation had on your mind? And your body as well? How much peace, how much uh, <coughs> sense of freedom and happiness do you have? And I do that because I know after every meditation, even those meditations you think haven't worked so well, Still, you're more peaceful, you feel more free, you feel more sort of sense of contentment than when you started. It has worked. And so if you reflect on that after every meditation, you realise the value of meditation. You experience it's working. And because of that, you like meditating, you want to meditate, you see the benefit of meditating. And that means that you don't have to, oh, I don't feel like meditating, you want to meditate. As the Buddha <coughs> said, you know, as soon as you want to meditate, it's like, you know, you go uh, to take the dog for a walk. As soon as you get up and, you know, get hold of the lead, the dog starts to wag its tail, it realises it's going for a walk. You don't have to force the dog to go for a walk. It loves going for a walk. It has so much fun going for a walk. And that's what one mind is like. As soon as you start meditating, way, he's taking me for meditation today. Ooh, yes. <laughs> so you really like doing it. 
So when you get the joy and see the benefit of meditation, you really see the benefit, of course then you want to do it and it's easy to do. If you don't see the benefit, you don't see the joy, of course, you know, you just let it go and it will just disappear. So especially when the meditation gets really joyful, and you, get, you, know, you really feel this is wonderful, of course you love doing it. It's better than watching the TV. Just watching your mind, being peaceful, being happy. What more can you want in life? Ajahn Brahm, can you